Let's talk about painless local anesthetic in the maxillary arch when we're anesthetizing uh, maxillary teeth. How can you give an injection that's so fantastic that the patient does not feel a thing? They will love you if you use this anesthetic technique. Now, we're going to talk about a mandibular injection on another Dental Minute video. Today, we're going to be focusing on the painless man maxillary injection of local anesthetic. Step one, dry the tissue and place topical ointment. Now, this is an excellent topical anesthetic gel combination. Lidocaine, 100 milligrams mixed with prilocaine 100 milligrams and tetracaine 100 milligrams and you can have this mixed in a compounding pharmacy it's very effective so dry the tissue and place this first with a two by two in the back of the mouth so it doesn't drain down the patient's throat and they think that they can't breathe they really can but they'll feel like they can't breathe because their throat's numb now this needs to sit on the tissue for about a minute to be effective. Then I'm gonna spray the tissue with Hurricane Topical Anesthetic Spray. This is 20% benzocaine. Again, there's a two by two in the back of the mouth. Now I'm blowing this in with my air syringe. I'm blowing it into the tissue. This is an incredible local anesthetic method your patients will love you because they won't feel a thing then these are the three types of anesthesia local anesthesia that i utilize four percent sit in this plane with no vasoconstrictor lidocaine two percent one to a hundred thousand uh, epinephrine now don't use lidocaine 2% 1 to 50,000 epinephrine. There's too much epinephrine and it can give a patient heart palpitation. So except in rare instances, don't use the 1 to 50, use the 1 to 100,000 epinephrine. And then if you need a long lasting anesthetic, say you're doing surgery or have a, a long, long appointment, you can use Marcaine 0.5% one to 200,000 epinephrine. Now, Marcaine will keep the mandible anesthetized for about 12 hours and the maxilla for about four to five hours. So if you have a long appointment, it's very effective. I always start with sitting this plane because it is pH neutral. This is about the pH of the body. So we start with that because there's no sting. I'm using a 30 gauge short needle. I'm turning the bevel of the needle toward the bone. And I put a tiny bend in the needle just so I know the bevel is on this side. Then, right at the coronal part of the unattached gingiva, don't give the injection in attached gingiva, give it in unattached. I'm going to barely go under the tissue and just tap the end of the syringe and express some of the sitness plane. Then I'll go a little bit further, tap it again, a little bit further, tap it again, but keep it against the bone, against the alveolar process. Don't let it go out here into the tissue or it won't get to the teeth. You want to keep it right on the bone and it'll just slide right in and go ahead and slide it in all the way to the end of the needle. Then we'll come back and do the same thing here. Just barely go under the tissue and just tap the end of the syringe where you express just a little bit of the sitness. The patient won't even feel it and then you can go a little bit further same thing here, but always inject on the facial into the unattached, non-keratinized tissue. And I'm just slowly, slowly. Same thing, just barely under the tissue, tap it, and then you can go a little further, tap it, a little further, tap it. 
And so the sit nest, which is pH neutral, is going to anesthetize the tissue. Then we're going to come back with the lidocaine and anesthetize the teeth. Now you can either use a long uh, 27 gauge needle or you can continue with the 30 gauge short. Again, I've bent this needle so that it shows me that the bevel is toward the tissue. And I'm going to slide that along the bone all the way to the end of the needle and that will anesthetize the superior alveolar nerve. You'll also get some anesthesia of the greater palatine nerve on the palate. Then I'm going to come back with the, I'm going to use the 30 gauge short for the bicuspids and the anterior teeth. Again, the bevel is toward the bone. Now with the lidocaine, I can go, I don't have to go so slowly. I usually do just because sometimes the tissue expansion can be a little bit uncomfortable. But that tissue's already been anesthetized with the sit nest 4% plane, which was pH neutral. Now the lidocaine and the marcaine are not pH neutral. So if you start with those, it will sting, even with the topical. Okay, following anesthesia on the facial side, spray the palate with the hurricane topical spray. Now this is an intracellular injection. This is critical if you're doing anything of consequence on people that aren't elderly. Once they're elderly, the, the nerve has changed and it's not so close to the surface it's shrunk and there's not so much sensitivity but if you're doing it on a young person or a middle-aged person it's imperative that you give an intracellular injection or the tooth will not be numb period most of the time if you're doing endodontics and extraction a crown prep you must give an intracellular injection and you always do that with sitting this plane. If you do it with lidocaine or something with a uh, vasoconstrictor in it, you'll get an ulcer, which is not the end of the world, but it takes two weeks to go away, and that'll be the only thing the patient remembers about that procedure. So use the sitting this plane after you spray the topical on the palate. Then I'm going to blow that in again, blow it into the sulcus. Then I'm going to Come again with the 30 gauge short needle, slightly bent, so the bevel is to the tooth. Now this is the critical part of this injection. Remember, the sit in this plane is pH neutral, so you don't have a sting if you don't sting the patient with the needle itself. So what I do is barely put that needle into the sulcus and tap into the gingival sulcus and tap the end of the syringe and keep tapping until it makes contact with the tissue very lightly and then continue to tap and finally you can put more pressure on the tissue and just slowly increase the pressure right in and the objectives you're injecting it into the periodontal ligament around the tooth so it's imperative that that bevel is toward the tooth and you determine that by slightly bending the needle, not a lot, just a little, and you know that the bevel is on the bent side. So this is a painless injection. The patient will not feel this even though it's on the palate. And after a while, you can actually make this tissue blanch and the patient won't feel it. But it's a net, and then, since we've got some implants right here, I can inject right here because this tissue or the greater palatine nerve in this area has been anesthetized from the intracellular injections with the sit in this plane. So I can inject here just straight into the palatal tissue without pain. Thank you all for joining us on this week's episode of the Dental Minute. Go ahead and subscribe right now, right here, and join us next week. We'll be showing you the bonding of a chipped tooth. You won't want to miss it.